Yesterday, you might not have seen I made a bonus video, or perhaps you've just seen it when you were looking for this one. And I built an obelisk in Lego, which is definitely one of the hardest shapes you can build. And if you're watching this video, you're definitely going to enjoy it. I can almost guarantee it. But today, we're working on Coruscant. We're about three quarters of the way through. Yesterday, there was a massive update. So I won't be covering any of that in this video because I'd spend too long talking about it, to be honest. But today, I'm going to be working on the Senate Hall with a bunch of different pods. Might even give a platform for Palpatine to give his whole democracy speech when he forms the Empire, which would be really, really cool. But it's going to be a difficult one to build on the structure of last week because there's not much room to work with. And though I am really liking the different shapes of these newer buildings compared to just the cubes that were the older style, you can see that little that little box on the top of the temple is really all we've got supporting. We've been able to reinforce it with the front bit here, connecting it down. But that's got to be eight, nine studs long, and it doesn't even come the whole way round. So what I would like to do is round it off at the corner, maybe not as sharply as that, but definitely have some rounded corners at the front and build a Senate chamber. From the outside, I have no idea how this is going to look. I don't know if I'll include a window into one of the pods, perhaps right in the center, we can have some sort of window and a balcony. I tell you what, a balcony would be awesome because we could recreate the scene with Maul and Palpatine in Phantom Menace. So I'm gonna switch up my design. We're adding a balcony out the front and that can lead into one of the pods. We're looking at probably about three Senate pods. It'd be nice to get a few more with a few smaller creatures, but probably three to five pods is all we're gonna be able to fit. I think we'll go for three for the safe option and then add in something towards the middle. It might be open back. I might try to close it off, but it might have to be open back and now let's take the measurements, start building the base, and then I'll tell you about some plans for next week. So the first thing I decided to do was actually set up my camera for a time-lapse. I feel like it's been ages since I time-lapsed anything on the channel, and it's one of the best ways to get all these little builds and modifications to you straight after each other and not having to stop, start, film, and drag out the process. So the first thing I did was get all of the round plates I could find to try and build out the base of this. I knew that I wanted to round off the building, which does make it a bit hard later, and also have a balcony that is also rounded out the front. So initially I was thinking about six, seven, eight studs wide, and then to go about four, even six studs deep. And very, very quickly, I knew I was trying to make the balcony way too big. And I ended up going with a round plate that was only two by six plates big, which compare that to the six by eight even that I was trying to go initially. It's a bit smaller than I would have liked. The next thing I did was start work on the rest of the room, which I knew roughly how I'd want it shaped because I know what I'm putting on the inside. And I tried to keep that in mind throughout the rest of this build going forward, making enough room on the inside for a Senate meeting and a scene with a handful of so I got a few plates out. I think they were four by sixes, some four by fours, and the four by four round corner plates. The one that's only a quarter of a circle. And that's why I used to beef up the build. And I actually included another two by six round plate to attach the balcony to the rest of the model because there wasn't enough room underneath to support everything. Underneath, we've got one single four by six support in the squared off plates in the middle. And then I did include two extra plates to hold on the round corners at the end. So the balcony is only held on on top and that definitely will need to be secured later on. And as this was a pretty straightforward build so far, I started building up the walls. There's not much more to a building than a floor and the walls, especially when you're making it modular, but this does get a bit more difficult in just a moment. I remembered when I was building the Moss Esper Pod Race diorama, an amazing diorama that if you haven't checked out, I definitely urge you to. It absolutely rinsed my whole collection of studs and modified studs from my parts bins, which there are a lot to get through. But I used a technique in that diorama with a round brick, and then I attached a one by three brick 
on top to fill in some of the gaps because I didn't own enough of the round bricks in tan I think I was using for the main body of the build. And I wanted to include something like that to add that bit of detail to the Senate building because otherwise you'd just be piling up a bunch of round bricks. And I've seen a few people include bricks like the round one by ones, but it leaves too many gaps. So I started messing around with this and I'd actually like to speak more, but I did forget to double check that my mic was actually recording. It was plugged in, but wasn't working. So I apologize for the dodgy audio. And what I had in mind was, you can see we've got the one by three attached to the round brick through the one stud connection. And I hoped to get a few of these one by two cheese slopes to fill up the gap between the brick on the end and the one by three in the middle. But when I tried to put it down, it's just not going to fit and it's gonna stick out even more than the original design. So it just was never going to work and I will have to rethink it. But what I could do is reduce what is in the middle to two studs and then it should work perfectly. So what I have done is got a jumper because a jumper does have a third hole in the middle. I'm not sure if the camera can focus on it, but you can see it does have that middle stud, which stay tuned if you like custom Lego bricks, you're definitely gonna like what I have in store for my next upgrade to the display. We're staying away from the CMF doors and looking at the bases themselves, and it heavily relates to this jumper tile, so I think you're gonna be very interested. But this middle stud, can connect to the middle of this curved brick. And you can see it also allows the snot bricks here, which I'm gonna have to refocus my camera. Give me one second, there we go. You can see a bit better now that there's a little gap between them, but it's gonna cover most of the space. It'll be interesting to see how these fare up to the other bricks we'll have, because I'll probably have to include some sort of round brick on the side, although, if they are gonna be at the entrance here, I could just leave them like that. They add a bit of detail into the side. Perhaps we can have a bar or something going up either side of the doorway, because we don't need all four studs. We just need three studs for a minifigure. So that could look quite interesting and also finishes up these rounded walls quite nicely. All we'd need is another jumper, which I don't know if you got a flash of it, but I have sorted this quite a few times, this tub, and it always seems to get messy. I never put the jumpers back the way I found them, which I really should start doing just to make my life a bit easier when building with the jumpers, because they're in almost everything I end up building. But you can see that a jumper brick jumper combination in the middle adds up for the next round brick. Let's take this one. And I think that could look quite cool for the wall. If we add a few different colors in there for the outside of the Senate building, that could look really, really cool. I'm not sure about that cheese slope. Perhaps we can add a one by bracket and just fill that gap a little bit more, but I'm gonna play around with a few designs and the next thing you'll see is what I decide to use. All right, it's been about an hour of me toying with different designs just for this little section of the wall and because we do want to get some snot techniques on the side of these bricks here i think it's going to be pretty hard to work with the original design first off we started with the one snot brick with the slope it had that gap the next thing i did was flip the slope round well first off i realized i don't have anywhere near as many of the light bluish gray snot bricks. But even with this and the slope flip the other way round, you still get that little gap in the middle. So this is where I started trying a few different pieces rather than the slopes. And the closest I think I came were these rounded one by one round slopes. When I used the brackets, which was the next evolution, it pushed them a bit closer to the brick in the middle. And what we could do with this one is push the slope inwards towards the brick. I'll show you again so you don't miss it. We can push the slope into the brick. If we were to remove that brick and instead use a one by one round brick, I'm slowly getting further and further away from the camera with these different wall designs. You can see that the only part going out is a little bit of that one by one bracket. I just realized I recorded that without my mic 
plugged in. So I am very sorry for that. I'll try to remember my mic next time, but hopefully the audio is good enough. If not, I'll probably end up voicing over. The bottom line is we finally got our walls and so now we can start building the rest of the Senate building. So I've built up the walls, added pods, and basically changed everything since you last saw. Well, I kept the walls the same design, but I have recolored them to get them looking a lot more detailed from the outside. We've got the light bluish gray tops and bottoms, and then a bunch of color in the middle. We do have a balcony here, which is room enough for two mini figures. I might try and get a few images of Maul and Palpatine on here when we place it into the city the top is tiled off with these rounded tiles at the corner it's going to be very interesting next week when we start building the next floor and as you can see on the inside we've got not one not two not three but a total of 11 senate pods and that is not including palpatines who i will grab right now and place in the middle but you might notice something strange about our palpatine well this Senate is ruled by none other than the feared Sith Lord, by all, even Palpatine, Darth Jar Jar. I had to include Jar Jar in the middle. I think it's really, really cool, especially when, well, it's a bit cramped from on top, but especially with all the different pods surrounding Jar Jar, I think it's turned out a lot better than I ever could have expected. And the only thing to do now is to place it in the city and get some really cool shots that I will be uploading over to Instagram. I don't really post too much to Instagram, but this is definitely worthy of a few images. So definitely check them out if you want to after watching this video. But before we actually place it in the sea, I'm gonna go eat because my stomach has been rumbling this whole time. And now it's time to put the Senate building into the city you can see that obelisk with mando standing on top i've put it in the city for now i'll break it down over the next couple of days but whilst it's up it might as well take place in the city but it is just over two stories high and the senate building should fit quite nicely on top i haven't actually sat it on top since i started building the walls and that balcony but as you can see it does fit it does look pretty nice it takes a little bit away from the temple below it but i think you can definitely still tell from the front that there's meant to be a temple with some sort of building on top i like all the extra colors on the side other than just having it gray and hopefully when we've got that other floor on the top which i'll get to in a minute because there is going to be a slight update to what i'm doing next week it will look a little bit better and match up to the naboo tower on the left Tatooine Tower we will renovate. I might try and squeeze that in at some point this year, but I think first off I want to solve this tan building or fix this tan building over on the right, the friend's apartment, Chandler and Joey's apartment, and get that match into the two above it. I also want to start work on some of these side buildings. You can see Lo-Fi Goals apartment just on the right. I've got a few other ideas for the other buildings I want to represent over on the side but of course right now the focus is the star wars towers and specifically finishing coruscant condo and like i said a second ago regarding next week there is going to be a bit of a difference because next week once we finish floor four we will have finished the coruscant tower and it will be version two of the finished lego city we have finished it once before and then we decided to pull two towers straight out and eventually even change the third one. I think Tatooine's tower was a part of the last one. So we're going to be looking at the differences and the future of the city going forward. I know it's only been like a month or two, about two months since we last did it, but the city's heading in a whole new direction. So it'll be interesting to see what the future holds, but that will be a separate video. I have to do it after next week. So if this is going out on the Thursday, probably for the Saturday or Sunday, I'll have that video out. So there is two videos next week. And if you do enjoy, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed this floor and are enjoying where the city is heading and the brand new direction of straying away from these square blocks. Check out all the videos on screen now. And as always, may the bricks be with you.